Hey everyone, Andre here from SignalWire. In this video, I'm going to be talking about AI agent functions. AI agents are agents that you can use to take care of menial tasks and free up human resource time. AI functions allow you to extend the functionality of AI agents by using HTTP requests to perform actions or fetch extra data for the agent to use on call. Before we move on, let's listen to a demo of exactly what we'll be building. Uh, in this particular case, we'll be using Zendesk as an example and building a complete end-to-end no-code solution. Hello, Andre. Thank you for contacting Lemonade Stands Inc. support. Is there anything I can assist you with today? Would you like me to check the status of your latest ticket? Yes, that would be great. The status of ticket number 9689 regarding Lemonade Order number 123 is currently open. How can I assist you further with this ticket? Do you know if the team will get around to it today? I'm not sure about that, Andre. I can't help with anything else. Goodbye. To recreate this AI agent functionality, we have two high-level components. One is SignalWire's AI agent, and the other is Make.com, which is a workflow automation software that's very visual and very easy to use for a full uh, no-code solution. So uh, I'm going to be showing you both parts. Let's start out with uh, the SignalWire AI agent. If you don't have a single wire account, uh, click the link in the description to uh, sign up and you'll get some, some trial money to try out our AI agents. Um, when you get to the dashboard, just click on AI agents on the left side of the screen and then go to add new and follow along here as I'm going to be showing you an existing agent that I created. So you can name it whatever you like. Um, and in, in this case, I give it a very simple prompt. I told the agent your name is Patrick and go get uh, go uh, get the user information. Um, this is it. I'm not telling it to uh, greet the user because I don't want it to even think about greeting the user before going to my uh, Zendesk instance and fetching that uh, the caller's information. Then we want the user to greet uh, the the caller. Uh, so let's let's keep going. Uh, we select we select the the agent the languages that we want the agent to speak uh, in this case i only selected english and then we give it some functions there are two functions that uh, we need to recreate this call flow uh, one is get user and the other is uh, get latest ticket let's look at both of them get user is what patrick knows to call as soon as the call comes in Right, and the purpose of this function is to go uh, and get the user's name from uh, from Zendesk. So we give the function a name, and we give it a purpose. The purpose is very important so that Patrick, the AI agent, knows uh, which function to call. In the prompt, I referenced get user the function by name, but you don't have to do that. You can just uh, tell it, go get the user's information. And based off of the, the purpose that we uh, select here, Patrick will know which function to call. Uh, then we tell it, uh, use these arguments. So when you call this function, pass these arguments. In this case, uh, we're passing uh, just the phone number, the, which is the caller's phone number. And Patrick will know automatically uh, to get the caller's phone number and pass it along to this webhook, which is from make.com, which we'll take a look at in a little bit. Let's look at the get latest ticket function. So it looks very close to the get user function, but um, instead we have a purpose that's to get the information about the latest ticket from the user, from this particular user. And the argument is the Zendesk user ID. And again, we have the webhook URL. So Let's look at the make.com side of things. Here we have the get user implementation. We have a webhook that receives the phone number, and then we use that phone number to search through our Zendesk to find users uh, matching this phone number. And depending on the amount of users that we find, we either tell, uh, we, we either return a response that says, we do not know the caller's name, and then essentially 
hang up the phone. Um, or we do know the caller's name, and if so, we give a response with the caller's name is blah, and the, their Zendesk user ID is blah. Um, greet the user, thank them for, for contacting us. And here we are doing a very important thing, which is we are expanding on the functionality of the AI agent. So when the AI agent starts a call, it knows nothing. It only knows to that its name is Patrick and that it needs to go get the user details. But when it does, and if there is a match um, in our send desk, then we provide extra instructions telling it to, yes, now you should greet the user and you should ask the user if they'd like to they, they'd like you to check the status of their most recent ticket um, then let's have a look at uh, get latest ticket so just one thing that's a very important detail here uh, when you start the call the agent does not know about the zendesk user id it does not know the person's name or the zendesk user id but when we return this uh, this data, the user, now, the, the agent now knows the user's name and Zendesk ID. So when the user then prompts the agent for um, the, to, to get the latest ticket in the details, the agent will know, oh, I need to call the get latest ticket information and I need to pass the user ID to that function as an argument. And it automatically will pick the Zendesk um, user ID and that will arrive here in the webhook and then we can use it when listing tickets. Uh, then depending on the amount of tickets that we find, we return a different response just like before. And that's basically all that you have to do in order to recreate the, the agent. There's just one last step, which is actually connecting the agent uh, to a phone number. So. If you don't have a phone number already, you can go to the phone numbers page and click new to purchase a new phone number. In this case, I already have two numbers here. I'll just edit the support number. And when a call comes in, I want to handle it using an AI agent. And then I want to select my agent. And then I scroll down, I hit save. And now when I call this number, I'll talk to Patrick. and should make.com be fully connected with uh, your Zendesk in uh, uh, in instance um, or anything else, um, you should be able to have uh, make.com return details about the caller, and then that will change the agent's behavior. The purpose of this video is not really to show you how to use make.com, uh, but just to simplify things in case you do want to follow along and use make.com to recreate this setup. Uh, we'll be providing the blueprints to the get user and get latest ticket scenarios. And you can just start a new scenario and then uh, go to import the blueprint uh, over on make.com. And you should be able to just have the exact same setup that we have here. And all you need to do is connect to your Zendesk instance and then copy the respective um, webhook links. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss future SignalWire in Seconds videos. AI agents are powerful now, but you certainly don't want to miss what we have coming in the next few months. Make sure to always check out our companion blogs for these videos as we always go a little bit more in depth. In this case, we're going to be looking at context switching so that you have more segregation in what your AI agent can and cannot do uh, during the call. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.